afternoon and welcome to the Good Food Festival 2020. I'm Sarah Lilford and we are in the Dusty Road Kitchen. Today we're going to be working with local and indigenous wild fruit. I was so proud recently to feature in the Hatando Wild Nut booklet and last year we focused on nuts. So this year we're using all the beautiful fruits here in Zimbabwe. I am an outside caterer by trade. Um, I used to, used to have a product range called Dusty Road and then I went into outside catering, which I love, catering for events, catering for uh, different functions, corporate and private. And in 2013, I published a cookbook called Dusty Road Cookbook, A Taste of Farm Life and Living in Zimbabwe. Uh, this won second prize in an international, and an international award in Paris. Uh, which I was very, very proud of. Last year, 20, what's that, 2019, yes, I opened up a restaurant in Victoria Falls called Dusty Road Township. We very much focus on local ingredients, local culture, and the woman in the community. Today, we're gonna to be making three different things. I'm going to be working with tamarind. We've got an iced tea made with tamarind and knee berries and um, a little bit of mulberries in there because they're mulberries, although they're not indigenous to Zimbabwe, they're, they're, they're a huge tree in my garden, so we'll use that. I've also got a bear bag cheesecake made with, a, made with a popped amaranth base and some cassava flour and a masao berry sauce. I love the masao berries. And then thirdly, we have got a malva pudding made with marula berries, marula fruit, sorry. I have made the marula jam from scratch. It's quite a mission and we harvested the fruit in between January and March. So I've got lots of bottles of marula jelly and we're gonna have a different take on malva pudding. We've got some different ingredients here. Some of you may be familiar with it, some of you not. We've got the snot apple, which I love as well. Sort of the bush chewing gum. Um, beautiful seeds, beautiful seeds, a bit, a, a beautiful fruit, a little bit tough, but great chewing gum. We've also got the resurrection grass, which grows in the coppies. In, I grew up in Garuvi, and uh, there was a big, big, beautiful Bushman paintings called Zombapata, and we used to always find the resurrection grass up there and put it in water and it would sprout and be beautiful and green. Uh, today we're using it more as a tea. Is the tamarind. The tamarind is indica, uh, found on the banks of the Zambezi. Again, not indigenous to Zimbabwe, but been around for about 3,000 years. So I think that's as good as. Our different nuts. We've got uh, mongongo, we've got the hacha, we've got the marula, and I use the, the bear bear most people are familiar with. I use that a lot in my cooking. So I look forward to showing you how we can incorporate all these ingredients together and make three beautiful indigenous wild dishes. I'd like to introduce you to Edric Sabonet. Edric's been with me for 20 years and he's very much part of the Dusty Road family. And he's helped me over the years make jams and chutneys. He's helped me with my catering and he's very much involved in our Vic Falls project. So this is Edric. We're going to be making a Malva pudding it's a little bit different. We've got marula jelly in it instead of the traditional apricot jam. And we're also using sweet potato. Here's my marula jelly, which is delicious. It's quite a dark color, it's set beautifully. And here is our sweet potato flour. Right, to start off with, we're going to cream the sugar and the egg. Right, to make that Malva pudding, we have creamed the sugar and the eggs together uh, till they're light and fluffy. We've slowly added the sweet potato flour, very slowly so it doesn't blow everywhere. We've added some vinegar and some bicarb and the marula jelly. And we've put it in the oven. This recipe works perfectly in the bush in a, in a wood stove or even on an open fire more like a steamed pudding in a, in a basin of boiling water.
The second recipe we're going to be using here is a uh, knee, rosella, and um, tamarind iced tea. It's delicious because it's got a bitter sweet flavor, so it's fantastic for quenching your thirst. And it has quite a dry taste, and it has the most incredible color, the sort of the reds and the pinks. I'm also throwing in some mulberries here, uh, just to give it an extra, a different dimension of, of those reds and purple colors too. So I've boiled three liters of water. I'm gonna add some knee berries. This beautiful rosella, which is one of my favorite products, full of vitamin C and just, just a gorgeous color. Tamarind, very tart and full of vitamin C. A couple of rooibos tea bags. Some resurrection bush, bush, which is quite bitter as well. And the mulberries. And the wild honey. I'm going to pop that on the stove for about half an hour. Let it bubble away and drain it and then cool it and it's delicious with ice and mint. Right, the tea has been boiling for half an hour and this color is magnificent. We're gonna see it in a second. I'm going to strain it, we're gonna cool it and then we're gonna put it in the fridge and then we're gonna make some ice and some mint. Oh, it's delicious. Anyway, let me add, strain that. Oh, the knee berries have expanded. The rosella calluses are full. Much lighter in color. Look at those beautiful colors. Just gonna pour the, pour, pour the last lot over. Look at that color. And there we have it. Squish that, squish any juices out of that. I hope you can see that. We'll put it in a glass jar and you'll be able to see the color. So we're on to our third recipe now. We're making a baobab cheesecake with a masao berry sauce. What's interesting about this cheesecake is the base, for, base of it. I've used cassava flour. Cassava is traditionally boiled and eaten, uh, but we've dried it and, and crushed it into fine powder. We've got maize meal. We've got popped amaranth. We've got hacha nuts and that's, that's gonna make up the base. So we've made up the base of the biscuits here. Uh, we're gonna crush them, mix them with a little bit of butter, push them into a, a homemade cheesecake base. Uh, we've made a cheesecake with uh, cream cheese, cream, baobab, which is nice and tangy, and it goes deliciously with the masala sauce, which is quite sweet and a little bit bitter at the same time. So we're gonna get busy with that and start, make, start crushing the biscuits. Right, we're gonna crush these, these biscuits, please, Edric, so that we can make the base for the cheesecake. Need a bit of manpower, don't we? Perfect. Put it in there. butter and we're just going to rub that in with our fingers okay. right we've got these poly pipe molds cheap and easy to make and very practical to make our individual cheesecakes so we've crushed the biscuits we've added the melted butter and we're going to just squish it down in our poly pipes And when that's nice and firm, we're gonna pop it in the fridge for about half an hour just to, just to set, let that butter make that base a little bit hard. Here we 
go. Super. Thank you, Edgar. Right, I've made the baobab mixture here. I've used cream cheese, cream, baobab powder, a little lemon, and I'm going to pop this lovely thick mixture into the on top of the biscuit base. And I'm just going to put that in the fridge for as long as possible. If you make it in the morning, better to leave it for the evening, even overnight's ideal. That way it sets nice and hard. So we're on to the final stages of the cheesecake, and this is my favorite part, garnishing it. I've also made here a masal berry sauce. I've boiled up lots of masals with a bit of wild honey, and it's delicious, and the color's gorgeous too. I've got a different variety of berries here, although not indigenous to Zimbabwe, these are all grown locally, and some different herbs from my gardens and flowers from my garden. So we're gonna loosen the, loosen the cheesecake, we're just going to pop it up. There we go, beautiful. And add a bit of this masala sauce, two dollops. I'm just going to bring it a bit across like that. Thank you all for watching the Good Food Festival and for learning about Dusty Road and all these gorgeous products we have in Zimbabwe. Thank you to Nasha, Caroline and Edric and everyone who's helped put this together. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Cheers for now. Bye.